guided by optimism and faith to fight for this country we love, to fight for the ideals we cherish, and to uphold the awesome responsibility that comes with the greatest privilege on earth, the privilege and pride of being an American. Projecting seasoned confidence honed through a lifetime of service and a core integrity fostered by a single mother who led by example, Vice President Kamala Harris offered a vision of America she promises to deliver with both competence and the courage of her deeply held progressive convictions. That was the pitch in Chicago, and the Democratic Party faithful absolutely loved it. But in this razor-close election, which will be decided by voters in seven tightly contested swing states, the role played by a former football coach turned populist politician may well prove pivotal in the final outcome. Leaders don't spend all day insulting people and blaming others. Leaders do the work. It's the fourth quarter. <coughs> we're down a field goal, but we're on offense and we've got the ball. We're driving down the field. And boy, do we have the right team. And so 72 days out, here's a couple of critical <coughs> questions. Can Vi the Vice President Harris energize an Obama-like turnout among African Americans, young people, and women concerned about reproductive rights? Can folksy Tim Walls help attract moderate white men who just can't stomach Donald Trump? And we're contemplating just sitting out this entire election. You know something, Marcus Davis, I'm going to start with you. <laughs> what was your take on uh, the outpouring of enthusiasm in Chicago and and the image and message projected by Kamala Harris. You know, I um, <coughs> notably have been very critical of the Democratic Party and their, their shortcomings. Um, I, I watched the convention and I was I was I was impressed. You know, part of my challenge with the Democratic Party had been uh, one, there are several policy issues that I disagree with. Two, I just always found them to be factless, right? I just found them to <coughs> not have a spine and wouldn't stand up tall. I saw a different party on this convention where it, they appeared to stand up and have some testicular fortitude, uh, which was which is exciting. But the most important thing as an independent, the thing that I appreciated was the attempt to reach out across the aisle and embrace the Republicans, as I call them, the reasonable Republicans, who understand that Donald Trump is not fit for office, and the Democrats have welcomed them in and said, we will join you if you join, join us. And so that, that, in my opinion, was, was, was very favorable. Gary Pollan, did you see a different Democratic Party? No. I saw a different star. I will say this, she gave a, I liked her speech, I thought it was good, and I agreed with probably 95% of the platitudes that were in the speech. But, you know, the Democrats, they mentioned Trump a hundred times. They talked about the border. I don't think at all. They didn't talk about runaway inflation. Uh, they didn't talk about their idiotic ideas for price controls. They don't talk about the world on fire. So it, we, if we're going to get this campaign into substance, I think Trump wins. If, if it's all about personality, heck, I think she's probably more likable than Trump. So if it's personality, we win. Walls, I think Walls is going to end up being an anchor for this ticket. He is the most radical governor in the country. He has done all kinds of terrible things to that state. And so, and, and he can be folksy all he wants, but he's, he's terrible. So that's kind of where I see it coming. So if it's really on Trump. And if Trump can, <laughs> if he can focus and talk about issues, the Republicans can win. And if he wants to do insults and personalities, then I think the Republicans lose. Paul Castro. It's pragmatists, and that's my term, like you, uh, who are going to decide this, this election. Uh, what was your take on the message that came out of Chicago? I, I think the message was good. I also think, uh, to previous points, there wasn't enough around policy. The issue is, right now, Harris is trailing by seven points with the working class with, um, and, and is also trailing uh, where Biden had been with working class members of color. 
I don't think that the issues around the economy and the border, which are really high uh, in terms of people's interests and concerns, were mentioned enough. And I think that's the thing that if the Democrats are going to close, they have to close with that group. Uh, Pennsylvania is going to be critical. Arizona and Nevada are going to be critical. And right now, I think a lot of working class voters, especially those of color, have not shifted. I mean, the fact that she's trailing where Biden was should be deeply concerning to Democrats. All right, Holly, uh, put your reporter hat on. <laughs> Uh, this thing may come down to Pennsylvania and Georgia. That's if the Democrats can hold places like Michigan. Right. Well, and I think they did a very good convention. I think Kamala's uh, speech was excellent, and it really appealed to people who want a good vibe and good feelings. But uh, Marcus mentioned fortitude. Fortitude to do what? It was pretty vague on policy specifics. And when we look at some of the policy specifics that are sort of easing out there, uh, we're looking at uh, massive tax hikes. We're looking at price controls. And uh, Paul mentioned some of the key issues issues of border security and uh, the economy are very important, especially to those swing voters and to people who are looking at policy and not just good feelings. When we look at those, I think there's a lot of concerns about the Democratic ticket. I saved Sue for last because <laughs> Sue uh, was at eight or nine of these things. How did this compare? But I have been, and that's what they are, they're conventions. It's to get the people that are there excited in, in a special challenge, a brand new, I mean, a candidate that people knew, but she had to introduce herself to her party a lot and then to the nation, and I thought they did an excellent job. The, the convention is not about winning the race. They'll flesh all those policies out and go out into the states and talk about them. So very good convention, and, and the convention, I think, achieved what conventions are supposed to. Introduced her and her running mate, and they did a great job.